everyone, my name is Zach. My name is Cody. And welcome to Entertainment Wars. Battle 1. for entertainment wars we are really excited to have you guys here we have four great warriors and man me and cody are super excited for you guys to see this because this is a brand new game show we're hoping it works out if it doesn't oh fuck then it was for nothing but we have four great competitors who are kind of our little hamsters in this hoping it all works out and they are very creative they're very original and that's what the show's all about not a lot of studying just a lot of prepping and just the show is about being creative the most and that's what's the most important thing is absolutely guys you know we've been bringing this to you we've prepped for eight months to bring this show to you it's finally here we got episode one ready to go we got our contestants and we're ready to roll so zach how about we start in and start introducing our players of course so we're gonna get right into it and our first competitor our first warrior it is griffin from all the way from over from men versus movies griffin how are you doing today hey what's up guys i'm doing pretty well um honestly i'm just ready to wipe the floor with everyone because my ideas are like uh, you aren't even ready for this like honest to god when you hear the shit that i have come up with you're gonna lose your mind so yeah i honestly i'm just ready to win um so the sooner we could get to that and I can eat breakfast, the better. Alrighty, now moving on to contestant number two. And thank you for that, Griffin. You know what? We got someone from the Durbania channel. You know what? He's a creative guy, a very creative guy. And he knows superheroes and Star Wars probably like nobody else's business. So welcome our next contestant, Mr. Durbin. What is up? Griffin, you should have ate your breakfast because, you know... I'm just gonna eat you for breakfast because my pilot is gonna be picked up after this, period. My pilot will be picked up. So I'm, I got my phone ready. I'm ready to take the calls from the networks and the studios and my video game. Oh man, it's gonna be awesome when people, you know, pick that up as well. So like, yeah, I'm ready to go, Griffin. I've had my breakfast. I'm ready to wipe the floor with you and everybody else here. Yeah, let's do this. Awesome. Love that intro. Love the enthusiasm. But of course, all the way from over from Canada. Yes, I said Canada. We have Mr. Jay Vaders. How you doing? Hey, I'm Jay Vaders here. Uh, you all know me off the of Rotten or Fresh, one fucking percent. And yeah, I'm excited to be on the first episode of Entertainment Wars. And honestly, I'm going to win this game because I'm really skilled at this. Or I'm still going to win, even if I do poorly. I think Zack and Cody will give me the victory out of pity. So I got this. I'm confident. I have average intelligence. So let's do it. You know what? Pity or not, Jay, those were some fantastic words. And you know what, guys? We've got Jay, we've got Durbin, we've got Griffin. Our final contestant comes all the way from the Northeast, a mysterious land called Boston. He's the creator of Rotten or Fresh, and his name is Mr. Rhino Tool. Ryan, how you doing? I'm doing great, Cody. I had work, I took a shit this morning, and I did eat some breakfast, and I'm ready to win this game. Uh, yeah, I'm Ryan O'Toole. I'm very happy to be on Entertainment Wars, Zach and Cody. And, uh, yeah, I'm gonna win this because I am the master behind Rotten or Fresh, the most original game show out there. All three of you guys are going down, and get ready, because I'm eating you for lunch. Damn, you guys are hungry today. You guys should have eaten more. Like, I, I'm all, I'm not hungry at all. I'm, I'm ready to host this show. Hey, great stuff, great stuff. But, guys, I think it's time to get to round one. So how about we start Entertainment Wars? All right, everybody. Let's start out with round one, which is so-called Name It. Here is why it is called Name It. So, in this round, this is our movie trivia-esque round. Each contestant is going to get up to six questions from six different movie genres. They will be getting description of those movies. These descriptions you may find a little bizarre, a little unique, but all in good fun. And depending on whether the player gets the answer directly on the money or they get very close that player will get one point like i said six questions they can get up to six pounds 
points and nobody will be eliminated at the end of round one. So guys, are you ready? I'm ready! Yeah! Yay. I'm going to let him speak for all of us because I can't top that enthusiasm. <laughs> Durbin's right. pumped. Durbin's pumped today. Oh, I'm pumped. I just woke up 20 minutes ago. <laughs> all right, then let's start out Same. with question number one, which I have on this notepad. And question number one says, what 1981 horror film has a group of kids go out into the middle of nowhere and get attacked and brutalized by demons and a tree. So what? again, guys, these are really weird. They'll get even weirder down the way. Well, you lost me at 1980s horror film, so. <laughs> it yeah. just, it, Some, trust me. Sounds it, like it, my life. Can, is it, is it, Jake? <laughs> yeah, that's great. it's a biopic. So, <laughs> yeah, and again, it doesn't, if you put something that's pretty close to it, we'll probably take it. Yeah, It's absolutely. all about being... I'm pretty no sure idea. with my extensive horror no. knowledge, I got it right on the money. I Four. get raped by right. trees every Three. day. Three, two, one. All right, <laughs> Durbin, what's your answer? My answer is Ancient Tree of Horror from 1981. <laughs> oh, sounds like As nice entertaining movie. of a movie, that. I would like to see that. That is incorrect. Ryan. Well, you said this was about being creative. I made that up. That's creative. <laughs> Yeah, it's a little hypocritical. <laughs> you know, you know what? guy you know guys, the way you described that movie, I wrote uh, Stranger Things. That seems like a great movie. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, that'd be a great movie if it wasn't already Ryan, a TV you don't show watch on TV Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Jay, what's your answer? I was gonna say showgirls, but uh, <laughs> I said I said uh, I said uh, the, is it the Evil Dead? You are yes! correct, sir. Holy uh, fuck! Thank you. I did not think oh, wow. that was Evil Dead. Wow. Jay, I should have known that. I don't classify them as teens. That They're just not... seems obvious. <laughs> yeah, right. but see, like I don't classify them as teens, so it's like yeah. that's kind of oh, weird. See, I just when I put the tree, I thought that was like. Is it? Is it I get raped by trees every day, so I know this. All right, and Griffin, what do you put? Uh, I I don't know. I just wrote the first horror film that popped in my head, which is Salem's Lot, which is not okay. even close. Okay. Okay. So. All right, okay. no problem. So let's move on to question number two. Cody? B plus right. for creativity. Question number two is in the category of action. What action film that came out in 2011 revolves around a group of policemen breaking into an apartment building to kill a crime lord? There's pretty much two answers to this one. Yeah, two much. movies. Two movies that two, we will take. Two movies? All right. All right. So. Is it specifically Policeman? Policeman? I would, yes. I would say so. I would say so. <laughs> okay. Guys, All right. Uh, uh... All right. Five, four, three, two, one. And one. Griffin, we're starting with you. What did you get for um, an answer? I said The Raid. Yes, that correct. is correct. Really? Hell yes. yes. Hell yes. All right. And since he said really, Ryan, what is your guess for this round? Uh, I thought of End of Watch. No. I thought of that too. Oh. Uh, that was close though. We had two. Jay, what did you pick? I have a better answer because it's two answers because they're both correct. Raid Redemption and Dread. Yep. Yes. Yeah, oh, I should have said yeah. Dread. That would have oh. been way better. <laughs> Dang it. Hey, Durbin, what do you have? <laughs> well, I, I totally did not know, so I put Die Hard 5 because isn't that where he goes to Russia <laughs> and there was a building and he killed some people in it? So that's what I went with. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's it. I never do well. That's never pretty will good. Uh, that's pretty, that good. pretty good. All righty. This so, is my favorite one. This let's move on one. to round number three in the category of comic book movies. A young man forcibly binds other men and photographs them for money. What? Repeat the category. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, say the category. It's comic book comic movies. Book comic movies. book movies is the category. Can you repeat the, the description again? Yeah, say yes, it again. Yes, I can. The description is a young man forcibly binds other men and photographs them for money. Binds, and it's a comic book. Okay, movie? how many? Ma wait, 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 it wait. Is. How many? How many answers can you have? Because I can think of like 
a bunch. I'll take a couple. I'll okay. take a couple. If yours is pretty good, there is one like that we're looking for. But like, if yours is like pretty damn close or like something that relates to those, I'll, I'll take it. Okay. okay. Uh, I got a good answer then. I hope. Okay. I hope someone gets the actual I, answer. I, though, I think I'll I got really it. Happy. I'm, okay. I'm not gonna lie. I think I got it. Okay, oh we'll just have to wait and see. What is? Give me that description one more time. One more okay. time. Okay. Yeah. I'll read this. All one. right. Just a young man. man. Jt. Hey, Jt. Hey. A young man forcibly binds other men and photographs them for money. And it's a comic book movie. It's a comic it book is. movie. A very popular comic book movie. Photographs them for money? Yep. Yep. Oh, wait, wait. All right. Ten, nine, eight, eight seven, seven, six, six five, five, four, four three, three, two, two one. one. All right. Jay, what do you got? All right, I'm going to explain this answer. I said Road to Perdition. Oh, my God. Wait, yeah. what? <laughs> <Yeah>. what? <laughs> okay, explain your answer. Explain I will your explain answer. it. Road, <laughs> Perdition, Road to Perdition is based off a graphic novel, and the villain in the movie is a young Jude Law who shoots the dead and he gets paid for it. He's a hitman that kills people, and he shoots it because he's a photographer. So, yeah. Okay, although I have, Road to Perdition wait, is a fantastic I no, movie. I have to give him it. Wait, no, what? Cody, yeah. we have to give him it. That's pretty damn Whoa. close. It's, it's out of the box thinking. It's yeah. out of the box thinking. Yeah. All right. I'm, wow. I'm taking it. I'm going to give right. him points. Moving on. Wow. Griffin, what That's... do you got for an answer? It's Spider-Man. Any yes, of them. thank you. Yes, it thank is. You. Griffin, that is one point. Uh, Ryan, what do you have? Griffin, that's a great answer because I have Spider-Man too. Okay. Hell yeah. <laughs> Hell Griffin, yeah. What do you have? I had to. I had to think about that because oh, Peter Parker's a photographer. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I have Griffin, it. What do you have? I, I Parker, did. give me a picture of Spider-Man. <laughs> I, I put Deadpool. I mean, immediately my head went to a rated R place, and I could only think, well, I don't remember him <laughs> taking pictures, but he did bind a lot of men together to find Francis, and <laughs> so that's all I can think. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh god. That was my favorite the best one. Answers. <laughs> that was my I, favorite one. The reason I said Road to Perdition is because as soon as you said bind people and shoots the dead, I'm like, I just thought of Jude Law. Okay, fair it's, fair enough. Okay. The next one, that if GT any of you guys get the next one wrong though, just leave. So <laughs> okay. Cody, bring us a number four. Oh, no, number four he is in the category <laughs> of animated. That's right. Animated. animated and the description is a man's midlife crisis endangers his family and his entire city can this you just is... repeat the question one more time cody boom i'll repeat the description <laughs> we need a JTE rule. and a man's midlife crisis endangers his family and his entire city oh, okay I really like this I'm movie. pretty sure I know this one. I'm pretty sure I, I know this you, one. I'm pretty sure, too. I'm going to debate on mine again. So I'm going to get my <laughs> oh, first half a point. Yeah! yeah. <laughs> that is, no. You cannot keep no. doing that. You cannot keep doing that. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> All right. Cody, ready? Five, four, three, two, go. All right, Durbin, what's your answer? The Incredibles. Yay! That is correct! Yeah! I feel good. I feel good right now. All right, Ryan, what is your answer? <coughs> the Incredibles. Sweet. There we go again. Another point. Griffin, what is your answer? Uh, the Incredibles, good game. See you later. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> All right, another point for Griffin. And, Jay, what is your answer? Very different than all of them. The Incredibles. Oh. Whoa, that is oh. different. <laughs> See, this is I wish I would have thought of that. Let me yeah. question. Is it I was about to be really pissed if he was about to start <laughs> arguing. Oh, my God. <laughs> this is why it's The Incredibles and not The Incredibles. <laughs> <laughs> is it Incredibles? You know, I'm really curious as to if someone would have said Incredibles 2, I feel like you could have made a point for that, too. And I would have taken you that. Any of okay. them. I was going to say, Rogue One is kind Star of going through a midlife crisis. <laughs> so... All right, All right, Cody, I'm going to read the next one. I, I'm going to read it. the next one. All Do right, it. so guys, number five is going to be in the category of action comedy. The description is, bodybuilders 
torture people for money. Bodybuilders torture people. Too easy, man. Too easy. <laughs> Can you just repeat the question, please? Bodybuilders torture people for money. Okay. One of the most underrated films of the last 10 years. Agreed. Yeah, I agree with that. Torture just a, people for money. Just a really fucked up true story if you really look into it, though. <laughs> oh, well, yes, then my yes, answer is. is totally not it. Is it your autobiography? I probably don't have the right answer. Might be. I don't know. You never know. You never know. Take a guess. Take a swing. That's <laughs> what we're all about. Yeah, in case <laughs> you guys didn't realize. Hey, spo spoiler alert here. This is actually the origin of the Zack and Cody YouTube channel. Yeah, yeah actually much. it is. <laughs> Five. But Co Four. But oh, I'll, I was about to spoil the answer. Two, one. Is it Boogie Nights? <laughs> Jay, what is your answer? <laughs> um, I said the classic Michael Bay movie, Pain and Gain. <laughs> that is yep. correct. Pain and yes. Gain. Yes. I have yes. seen that one. <laughs> Alrighty. Um, uh, Griffin, Pain and Gain, obviously. That is correct. All right, Durbin, you're next. Now hear me out on this one, because this is a show about creativity. I did not see Pain and Gain, so I put True Lies. Ooh, because Arnold okay. Schwarzenegger is a spy, but he's also a bodybuilder, and you know he tortured some people, and he got paid to do it, and he's a bodybuilder. I'd give it to him. I, I'm gonna give, I'd it, give to it to him. You know what? That if is I, if definitely I give, out of the box. If I'm gonna give Jay fucking Road to Perdition, <laughs> I'm giving Durbin <laughs> that one. Yeah! yeah. <laughs> I love right, this show. We have, we have right, and one give it more one person. Second, and then we gotta get Ryan, because it looks like he's still doing it. Alright, no problem. Alright, and then, uh, Ryan, what is your answer? Pain and gain. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. That is correct. All right, guys, we're about to hit the end of round number one, name it. And question number six comes in the category of comedy. And the description <laughs> is, a real life husband and wife write a film about their life. God damn it. <laughs> what's the category, Cody? Comedy. Comedy. Comedy? Okay, about their life. That's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah, great description. Good one. And it rhymed a little bit. I'm very surprised we actually yes, did that. Yes, it did. <laughs> I don't think we did it on purpose either. To be completely no, honest. you know what? I'm pretty sure we didn't. <laughs> All right. Five, four, three, two, one. Durbin, what do you have? All right. Are we ready for this? I put tag yeah. because it is based on a true story. There is a husband and wife team in there, and it's about maybe his possible last time playing this game with his friends. So there it is. Yeah, but the husband and wife didn't write the movie. Well, they sold the rights! No. <laughs> <laughs> that enthusiasm is what I love, and I can't wait for round two. <laughs> All right. Jay Vaders, what is your answer? Did you say me? Yes. I put, uh... Zack and Miriam yes, make a porno. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what I put. Because <laughs> it's a couple. They're pretty yes. much common law married. And they make yes. a movie. A porno. <laughs> Zack and Miriam make a porno. That's fucking right. <laughs> Here's the thing, that's creative, but did the husband and wife actually write the movie? Yes, yes they, they did. did. <laughs> Star Wars. <Yes. laughs> <And Yes. laughs> All right, that proves what, life. you know what, it's that proves what, I don't yes. know, because I've never seen this movie, but you know what? I'm it's willing to box. actually give the point to Jay just because of that. <laughs> yes. And I'm pretty oh. sure Griffin, yes. Griffin, did you have I, the same one? I had one? the same one, Zach and Mary make a porno, yeah. yeah. Yes, perfect. Yes. Okay. okay. And then Ryan, did you actually have the correct answer? I had the big stick. Thank you. That is the correct answer. Boo. But we love out of the box thinking. Durbin, <laughs> yes, we you were do. super close. Just tag is not written by them. It's written by a news reporter. True. She might so. have a husband though. 
Hey, maybe. <laughs> but guys, yes. that brings us to the end of round one. Name it. That was a great thing. Lots of out of the box thinking. Lots of stuff I didn't even think they would ever come up with. Especially that road to perdition. What the <laughs> it's fuck? a little bit of a suspect <laughs> point Jay's there. A, Jay's a weird guy. He knows his Pretty shit. much. So the current score in Entertainment Wars goes to Jay Vader's in the I lead with six points. <laughs> Durbin in last with two, but being very yeah! creative with that tag threat. <laughs> Ryan O'Toole at number f with four points, and Griffin with five. Hell yeah. <laughs> I'm proud of my two points. I'm proud of them. The you first know, Durbin, time I'm proud of lead, your two points, may too. I say. <laughs> Can I have 6.9 points? No. <laughs> All right. All right. Cody, introduce <laughs> round number two. All right, guys. Now we're on to round number two, Damn. also known as the start of the fun rounds. This is called Pitch It. And what you should know about round number two is that before the show even started, myself and the other host, Mr. Zach Pope, we gave our contestants the name of a fictional character, the year that that character was born in, and where they were born. With that information, each contestant had to put together a compelling a compelling television pilot that would make us want to sit down and watch this show from the beginning to the end of season one at the end of this character's arc. And now there, each contestant is going to get one to two minutes to talk about their idea. Then everybody will have five minutes to debate their idea. And then they'll have a 30 second rebuttal at the end to give one last point. And finally, Zach and myself will be judging them and giving them one to 15 points for the total of their idea telling them why we liked it what they what we thought they could have improved on and then and at the end of round two whoever has the least amount of points in this round will be eliminated and Zach tell them what we're judging these pitches on so we're judging the pitches on pretty much just originality, creativity, compellingness, and just something that wants me to actually sit down and watch like there's so many shows that come on television now that I don't want to sit down and watch so Tell me, why, why should I watch your show? But the three things that we did give them, though, we gave them the name, which was Jennifer Anise, or however you guys <coughs> want to pronounce it. I don't care. Two, born in, <laughs> born in Greece, and three, it takes place in the year 1920. The year that I think a lot of us were born in, maybe. Who knows? But let's get straight to it. And we're starting with our pitches with going straight to Griffin because I have to hear his pitch. Oh, you ain't even ready. All right, let me know when I can go. All right, and I'm starting the clock and go. Okay, so the year is 1928. Greece has become the central hub of the world, and more specifically, Athens. Think of it as Manhattan. The world has accelerated, so the 1920s is essentially a 20s-style aesthetic with Blade Runner technology. Many refer to the 20s as the Roaring Twenties slash the Jazz Age, and while the first half of that is true, celebrating the destruction and devastation of Europe as a result of World War One, jazz was actually invented in, 19, in 1789 by Dr. Arthur Jazz. He was a native Athenian and a devilishly artistic saxophonist, a lovely story for another time. But I know what you're wondering. Why Athens? Why Greece? What happened to the Americas? Well, it turned out colonization took a turn for the worse when the colonists brought over the bubonic plague to North and South America and it was soon deemed a quarantine zone and so no one was allowed to leave or visit, and as a result, the leaders of the world said that said fuck it and picked Greece as the new worldly hub. Now, most of the world's events played out as normal, just with technology advancements at an accelerated rate. Oh, and every time America pops up, just replace it with Greece. So post World War One, all is grand. People are drunk in the streets, and the wealthy host these grand, elaborate parties. One of the more prominent party hosting figures is none other than Jay Gatsby. But what you didn't know is that Gatsby is really his undercover name. His real name was Jennifer Annis. His parents didn't realize he was a man until the age of sixteen, so didn't bother changing his original oh. name but during the war he adopted the name Gatsby and since he was undercover it was more fitting why was Gatsby undercover you may ask well the whole rich guy thing was a cover up he was actually a spy working for his private venture called Abstergo Communications private anti-terror enterprises sanctioned left. by the Greek government the money and parties were a front to present the illusion that someone like him could never be up to international espionage so back to the mission well it all started in the trenches in France laser fire overhead thermal imploders being chucked across the terrain even manned hover ships with the machine gun blasters attached to it graced the battlefield. Fortunately for Gatsby, he was asked to sit the bench this outing and decided to wander off into a French art museum to re revel in the spoils Five, of war. Four, While pacing the corridors three, or the, of the Louvre, two, I will finish two, this. One. I will fucking finish Done. this later. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Oh, I wow. thought I said to be able to finish this. You, <laughs> you need I to say? understand the real reason why this is happening. <laughs> I did a lot I of say? set building there. 
That is amazing. That's, I'm intrigued that, already. That's a Holy really great fuck. idea. Holy cow. <laughs> so, right. may I finish Ooh. this, please? All right. <laughs> you can give everyone extra time. Just let me finish <laughs> this. <laughs> fuck. Am I allowed to finish? I, I pro like, you guys can have all the time you want. I just need to finish this thing so that you guys understand where I'm going with this. <laughs> okay, let's... Okay. Cody, Cody, do you want to do three minutes? Three minutes it is! Okay. Okay, cool. I Ready will do this really quickly. Go. Okay, so like I said, he went to a French art museum. So, while pacing the corridors of the Louvre, he came across a giant-ass crystal ball. And after touching the ball, was sucked into a vision of the future. He saw dictators pillaging the earth, and when all that was over, the ball literally spoke to him and told him to assassinate Benini Mussolini. So, not Hitler, Mussolini. At the point, it became clear to him that this would become relevant at a later point in his life. So, now back to present day, and the Italian fascists have risen and taken control over Italy, who is the face, and, and the face of the mo movement is is none other than uh, Mussolini. So it was at that moment that Gatsby remembered the prophecy and realized he must cut off the head of the snake before things got worse. So Gatsby has to balance the rich playboy guys he wears in public society with turning the tide of the world for the betterment of society. So back to the party. It ends. Gatsby leaves on his secret invisible spy jet and heads to Italy. While the tactics he learned during the will the tactics he learned during the war serve him well? Is the fate of the world doomed to World War II all over again? How does Hitler factor in? Done. Tune in for the rest of the season of The Grecian Girl. Grecian Girl. The Grecian Damn. Girl. Boom. All right. Wow. Okay. Sounds that like was a pretty great. interesting spot. So, thriller. going from here now on, three minutes for each person. Fair I'm a enough. lightheaded. So, Griffin, take a drink of LaCroix and get ready for debating. Jay, it is your turn because apparently you just made this up, so I got to hear it. So, Jay, on the count of five, you're going to go. Five. Four, three, <laughs> two, one, go. That's the pitch. I'm kidding. Uh, I'm a huge uh, admirer of Greek mythology. So this play it takes place in 1920, <laughs> and it's about Jennifer Anise. And basically, she's just like a, a farmer works on the farm stuff, but she's having these nightmares. She's having these nightmares about someone from another world, and she has no idea what it is. So one day when she prays at a Greek temple, she gets a vision from Hermes. Yes, you all know who Hermes is. And basically she finds out she is the bloodline of Hades and Persephone. And it is up to, up to Jennifer and East to travel to the underworld to rescue Persephone from Hades. Because if you know Greek mythology very well, that Persephone was a Greek god, but then Hades took her as a wife and trapped her in the underworld for all of eternity. She's basically Hades' uh, servant, basically. So it's up, up to Jennifer Nice to, to save her mother, and she is also the bloodline of Hades as well. She is basically a god, but uh, Persephone wanted to protect Jennifer Nice, so she sent her in the human world to live as a human. Because if she sent her to Olympus, Hades knows how to get through Olympus. So it's up to a bloodline of Persephone and Hades to go rescue per per Persephone from the underworld and get her back to Olympus to be a god that she once was. So she has to travel through all the underworld, and if you all know our underworld very well, uh, uh, she has to travel through Tartarus first. That's where the Titans live, and there she has to uh, basically get through all the Titans, and she has to basically have to do this game of uh, challenges and the game of wits against Gaia and Kronos and all that stuff, and basically... It's basically a fantasy adventure story, and it's all about a girl trying to save her mother from her evil, sadistic father. I, I'm going to have Teresa Palmer play uh, uh, Anise, yes, the, the character, and I'm going to have Claire Danes play Persephone, and Logan Marshall Green to play Hades. And basically, my show is co-created by Ryan Murphy, because anything Ryan Murphy does is fucking masterful. And yes, that's my show. It's going to be an eight-part Netflix uh, miniseries. That's it. And it's called The Blood of Persephone. I don't even Blood need three of Persephone. Minutes. Awesome. Yeah. Blood of Persephone. Cool. Great, great cool idea. All right. I like it. All right. I don't know how to spell Persephone, but I'll guess. All right. All right. Ryan. Should Ryan or Durbin go first? Who should go first? Cody? You know what? That's actually funny. I'd say <laughs> let's let Durbin go first. I've been waiting for this. Yeah, all right. Go, all right. Are we ready? On the count of five, four, Three, two, one, go! My name is Jennifer Anise. I was born November 11th, 1914. I'm 15 now. I wish I had a relationship with my parents, but the truth is, they fear me. I never knew my father. He wooed my mother and then was gone, and she was left with me. Yeah, yay for her. 
Her family found it scandalous, so they abandoned us. And she feeds me, she puts a roof over my head. In short, because it's just to fulfill the bare minimum of her obligation for creating an unwanted life. But it's more than that. The day I was born, there was a large earthquake. And the sun stopped shining. Not an eclipse! It literally did not shine for a day. And things didn't stop there. As a toddler, I liked shiny things. As I would think about diamonds and precious stones, they would suddenly just pop up from the ground as if they were little diamond trees. My mother didn't understand this, but this strange gift of mine, she actually liked. She would show me pictures of rubies and precious stones and diamonds, and suddenly there they would pop up from the earth right by my feet. My mother was enraptured by this gift. And lo and behold, my grandparents returned because nothing unites a family like wealth. Then one day, my dog died. And it was the first thing that I had ever watched die. But I actually saw his doggy spirit leave his little doggy body. And I said, wow. no, go back. And so his spirit returned to his body. And my family feared me. And that poor dog was never the same <laughs> since that day. A broken shell of what it once was. One day when I was 10, my grandfather passed, and this was a true tragedy for our family, for this was the one man who loved me and accepted me for who I was. So I told his spirit to return to its body, and it did. But he was a broken, hollow shell of the man that he once was, and my parents hated me for it. So I told him he could die, and his body crumbled into dust. And that is why, when you manifested yourself before me in this alleyway, I believed you when you said you were my daddy. So, Dad, Hades, what do you want me to do? Okay, now here we go from Hades' perspective. Are we ready for this? This is, this is Hades' lines now. Here we go. Here we go. Hold on. I got to scroll up. I got to yeah. scroll up. We are not gods in so the my sense of that word. We are not supernatural, but we have come from another world. When they left, my brothers and sisters intentionally left me behind. Fifteen years ago, they returned for the Earth's resources, but they found me alive with an army of hybrid children to fight them. Together, we drove them into retreat. It cost me all those children, but here I remain. And now there's you. Of all my children, you have shown the most power. You have six other siblings around the same age who are close to having as much power as you, but just shy of it. Unite them to me, and together we will defeat the gods as they are on their way back. Five back to Jennifer Andy, that sounds Five, good, but one problem. Four, who's the good guys? Who's the bad? Three, Who do I really two, trust? I will unite one. my siblings. Done. But to find the truth. And that's the show. Awesome. That's the show. Wow. Do you have a title, Durbin? The show title is Gods of Greece. <laughs> nice. 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 <laughs> All right. That was a fantastic, fantastic idea, Durbin. Now know we move on to our was. final contestant. <laughs> Let's move on. Mr. Ryan O'Toole, what is your pitch? All right, so I'm going to keep it short and not make it three minutes long. I have a pretty self-explanatory plot to my show. While we all know Greece is all about gods and all that, I have something completely different. So it takes place in the year 1925, and Jennifer and Nice, she is a 23-year-old girl who's trying to become a big actress in her time period, which is really hard because the 20s is a time period where no one is accepted of anyone who's ugly. And Jennifer is but ugly. She has long hair, she has big feet, and she is going through the dumps right now in her life. And she's played by Margot Robbie. There's going to be 10 episodes in this season. We all know Margot Robbie is gorgeous and beautiful, and she is going to this time period. She wants to become a big A-list actress. And I know it sounds like La La Land, but trust me, Felicity. <coughs> She goes through ropes. She has a great relationship with her mother and a terrible relationship with her father. She doesn't know who her father is. And she goes through the journeys of what acting is all about. But the constant struggle she goes through is people bully her. People push her to the ground. They slap her. They try to kill her. And so she goes home every day feeling suicidal thoughts and wanting to kill herself. And so she listens and listens to songs every single day to motivate her and to wanting to be a great actress. And she is one, <clears throat> she has a huge crush on this actor who's played by Ryan Reynolds. And she falls in love with him and she he's trying to accept her for who she is. And one day she's gonna prove to him who she truly is by acting out many great iconic scenes. And this, 
soon. She goes through these struggles, she gets the man she loves throughout her journey, until one day she is going to perform one day. Near the end of the season, she is building her way up to have a big audition for a Hollywood A-list film in Grace. So the whole show is about Jennifer and Nice starting from the bottom all the way to the top. In a niece. That's my title. Great. I like the title. Fantastic. Great thing. All right. Great thing. All right, guys. Now here comes the fun part. Those were all some very, very fantastical and interesting ideas. Now it's time for me and Zach to take a step back because with five minute clock, you guys are all gonna have the chance to debate and talk with one another about why your idea is the best and after that five minutes Of course, we'll have the 30 second rebuttal. So let's get started Do we just yell at each other for five minutes now? <laughs> <laughs> yep, yell at each other. Go, go, yell. It's debate. God's go. Greece, people. We got space aliens We got ancient gods and we got superpowers and a plot line of gathering six other superpower people together, and that's an amazing season arc. I want to watch that show right Durbin now. Durbin minds the proper Greek the, story. The minds the proper I don't story. want the it's proper simple. Greek story. We it's already got that. Season. This is Greek story it's, and it's, aliens. I don't want aliens in Greece. So, it okay, well, here's, here's the it thing, Durbin. You never got to the aliens in your pitch, so I didn't get that. But what I will say is that that is very just like stereotypical like okay so you're gonna have a show that takes place in greece so we're gonna talk about the gods even though it's the 1920s if this was maybe like whatever bc then yeah i get it but in the 1920s i feel like you should be relevant to the time period make some modifications if you can the 1920s is a really big time and that was as fast yeah, as yours was is all about rise. future so hover cars and, and and a blade yeah, runner I type world, world in the 1920s Griffin, right, i said the world accelerated but so in, in this crammed. specific it's instance crammed. there's a lot of shit going on is it yeah, cramped? Everything is written right here. I just talked really fast. If I had it, more time, it feels to be able to understand it, it, what's going on. I kind of dozed off every five minutes too. Like it was a little boring. It was kind <laughs> of dull. Because it's long. Like because it was, it's the long. writing it felt half-assed. It was just it was not. It, and it Greece invites the, really the really gods. It invites the gods. You got to talk about boring. the gods if you're talking Greece. I don't want to learn. Okay, name me something more interesting than when in 1789. Dr. Arthur Jazz created uh, The Jazz. Greek gods I mean, being aliens hilarious. and causing World War One. Yeah, that's a backstory in there that's going to be revealed in Season 1. Durbin, I appreciate the Greek yeah, thing, but mine's more I, interesting. I never mine's got more that simple in story. Pitch, it's an adventure so. story. It's about a girl trying to save her mother. Her mother's been imprisoned by Hades for thousands of years. And it's well, mine's about a her. girl trying to find her family and unite them together and figure out, is Hades the good guy or the bad guy, or are the other ones the good guys or the bad by guys? Way, Who do I unite again? Uh, characters I'm going to take a... Uh, Take Ryan, I, yours I, is so No, that's not true. It's Fargo Robbie. Times before. Ryan, if I wanted to watch a show about you, La I mean, you La literally Land, said it in your pitch La yourself. That's one movie. Yes, exactly. You, you said it in your episodes. pitch. You said it was basically La La Land. It's. But I'd rather watch La La Land than 10 and episodes of the no show. there's no way Margot Robbie would play a role like that. I am sorry. Absolutely. No yeah. way. Yeah. Hell. Like, you're saying Margot Robbie is going to play like an ugly person? That's not going to work. Like, no fucking way. Like, that's, no that's way. below Absolutely her pay grade. She would never yeah. do it. It's, it's, your story was so cliche. It was so was formulaic. My story was fucking <laughs> awesome. <laughs> It was fucking awesome. Who <laughs> <It's laughs> <really laughs> <really laughs> has Ryan Murphy? Who I have Ryan Murphy, Murphy creating it. We've seen that a billion Ryan Murphy. times before. So, uh, not in TV shows. So, Name so, me four TV shows about Greek gods. Go. National you can't, because my story yeah, is fucking amazing. Yeah, but when have you ever seen Zeus actually be an alien? He's not a god in the supernatural sense. That's what my script said. He's not a god in that supernatural sense. He's something else. What is that something else? What is the extent of their abilities? There's so much mystery to dig into. So much open to go through this art. That's that's what I want to see. I want sci-fi. I want superheroes. I want powers. I want it all. And I think my show gives that all. The Persephone thing is pretty cool. I like the fantasy aspect of it. But... In the end, it's just, it's stuck in this one lore. Mine gives it the opportunity to grow and branch out and try to do something different. But my show is also scary, too. Like, the underworld is a terrifying is it? place. Which, uh, when you just go to Tartarus, Tartarus is one of the most dangerous places but in the here's underworld. here's the thing, you never, you never delved into that in your pitch. You just said, I'm this, delving you, into you it like, right now. You just <laughs> 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 I'm fucking doing it now. It's in the fucking underworld. It's fucking terrifying. But we're arguing with your pitch, though. It is terrifying. Like, if you're 
take you to the underworld? Right? Of course not, because you went fucking right off. Whoa, one minute, okay. guys. One minute, get, one like, minute. Are we gonna get, like, the underworld from Hercules, the animated film? Yeah. Or are we gonna get, like, the underworld from, like, I, I don't know, some demonic version of hell? We're gonna get a demonic like, version of hell, and Tartarus is is the most dangerous place. That's where all the titans go. And she has to outwit the titans. Right. Because the titans are all about knowledge and stuff, and to get past Gaia, she has to See, mine gets to go wits. past the okay, though. What's once, myth, once again, what's true? Where, where do the gods really live? What is Olympus? What is Hades? And we get to explore all kinds of different avenues of what could this really be? Durbin, yours is Durbin. Durbin, fan I, uh, Durbin I love your enthusiasm. I love your delivery, and your idea is interesting. That's right, it I wins. Just, here's here's the thing, it's too it's too just like stereotypical of Greece when you're talking about Greece. No, like, it's oh not. God. It's like, aliens. Yes, it is. This is stereotypical of Greece because it's literally the gods. Mine is aliens. Yours feels like a fan This is a show taking place in the twenties. Well, I'm a fan. I'm side part. Three, two, one. Bing. Done. No more arguing. <laughs> Silence. All right. Silence. Oh, guys. <laughs> All right, everybody. Everybody. Those were some great arguments. Listening to you guys debate and talking about your ideas, that was fantastic. Very chaotic for sure. But now it's time. <laughs> Gather yourselves. You know, zen, meditate, whatever you have to do. Now it's time for the last 30 seconds. Each of you is going to get 30 seconds of a rebuttal before Zach and I decide what our verdicts are going to be with the points. So let's start out. Let's start out with Durbin. 30 seconds for your last point. Go. All right. Of course. Of course, mine sounds like fan fiction, but fan fiction is some of the best writing ever. I'm a fan of the sci-fi genre. I'm a fan of the gods, and it'd be awesome to explore Greek mythology from a sci-fi level and not an ancient god level, and it opens the door to do classic things but explore new things, and it can have a very interesting arc for Jennifer as she grows and meets her siblings and figures out who the gods really are and where their worlds really are and, and what they're all about. I think there's so much to explore and so much room to do so many great, fun sci-fi things. Awesome, awesome. All right, and Jay, your turn. If you want to watch a cliched mess, watch Ryan's. If you want to watch boring fan fiction, watch Durbin's. If you want to watch something <laughs> that I didn't even pay attention to, watch Griffin's. Uh, but if you want to watch an actual fantasy adventure about a girl trying to save her mother from the underworld, watch this. It is captivating. It's dramatic. It's scary. And it's also incredibly well acted, and it's created by Ryan Murphy. The guy who did People vs. OJ. This guy knows his television, so watch my show, not theirs. Fuck you guys. <laughs> all right. Oh, great. All right. Screw all of us then. So, all right. Ryan, tell us your last 30 seconds. My show is boring. Well, why do I want to go to the fucking underworld? And that's scary. My show is at least different. I mean, exactly. Greek, gods, Greek gods is all about battles and all that. Why not see a movie about a Greek person that's going through struggles? And we live in a world today where people get judged and bullied for how they look, and we get to see them accomplish their dreams. That's the message of my show. We've seen it before, but it doesn't in a different way. And the whole show is about this character, Jennifer and Nice, going through different struggles in her life and trying to obtain her goals in a different way. Done. Okay. Awesome. Finally, Griffin. Last 30 seconds. Hold on one second. Okay. Um, so none of you really attacked my idea. It's clearly the most original idea in the room. Also, if you like history, it's got that. If it's got futuristic stuff, it's got that. If it's if you like transgender stuff, it's also got that. If you like, um, uh, you know, attacking fascism, it's also got that. There's a world here. There's room for spinoffs. And like I said, it's the most original idea in the room. So. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. He ended at 22 seconds. So, with all that said, those were great ideas. What do you think, Cody? Like, I, I liked each and every one of my ideas. I do have my criticisms about a couple yeah, of them. Yeah, no, absolutely. And But I do like each and every single one no. of them. So, whose idea do you want to start with first, okay, Cody? Okay, honestly, I'd say let's, let's start with Griffin's, and I do want to start out with this. Griffin, if there's one thing I absolutely love about your idea, it is the originality of the show. Because, yeah, people could compare it to Blade Runner and all that other stuff, but it... I don't. I, I think it's so I creative. Mean, well, yeah, people can, you know, with the futuristic elements of it, but the whole way that, that you described, you know, the whole idea of how history and what we think of the past is is different and what people think of the character from the book, 
Jay Gatsby is actually Jennifer Nice, and it's kind of a spy thriller also. I mean, this is almost a completely perfect idea for me. My only, my only problem with it is, other than, my only problem with it is, the, is that whole idea that it might feel a little bit too much like Blade Runner, but here's the thing. Between 1 and 15 points, you get a solid 14 from me. All right, and for me, I, I love the idea. I thought it was really original. It made me think, like, this could be the next fucking Game of Thrones. Like, that type of shit. And, but, like, sci-fi type. So, um, again, I think the one thing I did have, it was a... I, I'm sure if I gave you, like, 30 minutes to explain this idea to me, it'd probably be, like, a perfect thing. But I'd give it a 14 just because, like, I was a little bit confused at some parts. But, besides that, I was really engrossed into the whole story and everything you were saying, the whole jazz, and it, it really captivated me. Well, thank you. So, Finally, someone agrees with me. It's, it's just clearly, so, clearly has the potential to be something great. All right. Yep, and with that, combined with me and Zach, that's a total of 28 points going towards Griffin. But now, let's go Plus to Plus the five J. he got, so now he has 33. Yes, Griffin has 33 points as of right now. All right, going up next, let's talk to Mr. Jay Vaders. Jay, I love the Best idea I, that I did not come up two minutes ago. <laughs> I love the enthusiasm that you have with our idea. I think it could be a cool adventure series over the course of a few episodes and make a really cool arc for the character. My only problem is between Durbin and your idea is that if we're going to talk about stereotypical things that come out of Greece, this is the thing that feels the most stereotypical for me. And it feels like something that would be better applied if it was put into a movie format instead of a television format. But other than that, I don't really have any other criticisms. I think it's a cool idea. So for me, you're going to be getting a nine. Okay, me and Cody must be like thinking the same mind. So I'm actually going to give Jay a nine too. I like the idea, but again, I actually think it works better as a movie than a TV show. That that's my one thing. Greek mythology movies, a lot of them suck. <laughs> yeah, they all suck though. So, but again, I thought it's a very intriguing idea. But I'm gonna give a nine just because I I really felt like it would have worked better as a movie overall. Cool concepts in there. I love to go to the underworld. That'd be freaking awesome. But I've also been in the underworld in tons of video games too. So I'd have to get something new from there. <laughs> all right. So that is. I'll take it. That is 18 <laughs> points to J. All right. Next, moving up. Plus the, the six. So 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. So 24 points for Jay. All right. Next up, Mr. Ryan O'Toole. Ryan, this is an idea that I really, really dug. And the reason is, yes, there are some similarities to La La Land. I'll get that in a second. But it does feel like a fresh and original take. Very, very. And it's something that, it, it to me, doesn't feel like we got with any of the other. It's a fresh and personal story of someone living in Greece trying to that very entrepreneurial mindset trying to become better than they are trying to become the best version of they can be and trying to reach their dreams and I mean that's something that reaches with me personally and I feel like you know with the casting choices you make yeah it could be good and I feel like this would be a great great television series but kind of like with Jay I feel like this might be better as a movie and also for me personally, it does feel like it's borrowing a little bit from La La Land. But overall, I still really, really enjoy the, uh, the idea. So I'm going to give you the same points that I gave Jay. I'm going to give you a nine. I'll take it. <laughs> Great. So I'll say this. I really loved Ryan's idea. Is it cliche? Yes. Is it heartwarming? Yes. I like the moral of the story that he's telling. And if you guys don't know, like that show Barry on HBO, I talk about it a ton. It kind of gives me those vibes of that with Margot Robbie kind of being the main character. So yes, it's cliche at times. Yes, it's a little obvious sometimes, but I thought it was cute. I thought it's a cute idea and I'd be intrigued to watch it. I, I think it would work perfect on a 30 minute format as a little comedy show on like HBO or something. Like I feel like HBO would pick this type of show up, especially if it's Margot Robbie. I mean, who the fuck doesn't want her on her show? So well, <laughs> so I'm gonna give Ryan uh, 11 points, which brings him up to 24 points. Okay, okay so he's tied with Jay. Nice. Yes, and All right. we, now Final. we go to Durbin. We go to Durbin. And you know what, Durbin, <laughs> I love, love, love this idea. Yes. Because although it does feel very stereotypical, like Griffin was <laughs> saying, of Greece, to me personally, 
it takes that idea of Greece and it does provide something different because you're taking that whole idea of the Greek gods and goddesses. You're, it, it seems like there's going to be a twist on it. It seems like we're going to different dimensions or different worlds. There's, there's, there's peril, there's intrigue, there's all these stuff that you not only want to learn about Hades and all these other characters, you want to learn about Jennifer and East because there's so much about her history, about where she comes from that you just want to, this is a show that I absolutely would want to continue with. My only question is, is that after the first, after the first season would go, I'm not exactly sure where you would take the character from there, but that may not or may not be a bad thing. But the stereotypical Grease thing does take a couple of points off for me because I feel like that will happen during the show. But still, it's not very much off. You get a 13 from me. Yeah, yeah! And from me, of course, for Gods of Grease, I'm going to give it actually a 12. Or, sorry, an 11. Oh! I can't oh, read my handwriting. Oh, that hurts. But, but, the thing that really, because I was kind of, I was in on it, and then I wasn't. The thing that really got me into it, though, was when you said aliens. I was like, the hybrid kind of different thing of looking at the gods as an alien is a, is a cool concept, and I really like that, and it pulled me into the world. I, to be honest, though, when you were talking about Anise, I wasn't really into, like, her kind of story you were telling. Like, I like the concept. It just seems like something I've seen before. But it's something that I would be intrigued to watch, at least. So, with all that said, your overall, your points are 27. Which, right now, if we're saying this, we and Cody did not think this was going to happen. We actually have a tie right now between Ryan and Jay. Mm. Alright, guys. So, moving into this. Before we get to round two, we're actually going into Sudden Death. And Sudden Death, right now, is going to be decided by Griffin. Because he has the most points right now at 33 points. So, okay. Griffin, heads or tails? Uh, let's go with Tails. Alright. Alright, so, with Tails said, we're going into the battle portion. So what's gonna happen is between Ryan and Jay, they're both gonna say a number between 1 and 10, and we're gonna give them a minute and a half to discuss who would win in a battle. So, going from this, Ryan, pick a number between 1 and 10. Okay, uh, 6. 6. Alright, so <clears throat> yours is... Your character is Gur from Invader Zim. Jay, pick a number between 1 and 10 besides 6. 1. 1. Your character is Mario. All right. And for <laughs> one minute and a half, please discuss who would win in a fight and go. Can you repeat uh, Mario character? would win because I don't know who his character is, so his, Mario his, will definitely win. His character is Gur from Invader Zim. I don't know what that is, but... <laughs> okay, cool. So discuss it. Mario is on mushrooms. He can grow super big. He has Yoshi. He has Luigi, his gay counterpart in my head. And he's going to fucking kill that invader or whatever fuck his name is. I don't play video games, but all I know is that guy's a fucking pussy. And he's going to fucking <laughs> die by fucking Mario with his badass mustache. He's got ranches. Oh my God. He's got guns. In my world, have you seen the Mario Brothers movie? He's got fucking guns in my fucking world. Mario is the shit. And that guy, I've never even heard of that guy. That guy's nothing. That guy is just... Whoever the fuck he is, he's a whip and a pussy friend of Mario. Ryan, you can leech. jump in and discuss why you're gonna win. Alright, I've never heard of this character either, so this is rigged, but Gur is gonna beat Mario because I like, he has lasers, he's gonna shoot Mario's mushroom. Mario's gonna fall off and it's gonna go boom, 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 boom. And Mario dies all the time anyway, so it's kind of cliche. That's right, my he dies all the time, he's coming back, you can't, Gur, you can't Gur, kill has, Mario. My, my Mario gonna is weapons, he's you gonna kill Mario, you he keeps coming fucking back. Mario's the fucking one right goddamn Mario fucking stand Mario's got Luigi, he's got fucking Yoshi, and he's gonna shoot, and he's gonna shoot, and shoot like Yoshi's asshole, that guy ain't shit. That guy's a Yoshi's gonna shit 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 on fire. fire, that guy sucks, <laughs> that guy has lasers, who the fuck knows, he's gonna slow. stop, stop, alright, right. holy uh, shit, so, for you guys don't know, Invader Zim's a Nickelodeon show with Gurr, it's a robot, so I'm surprised Ryan actually got the laser part right, <laughs> oh wow, <laughs> so, with all the F words in there, and the fact that this video is probably gonna get totally banned now, yeah, it's all right. To my decision. <laughs> Cody, who would you say won? Okay, here's the thing, Ryan. <laughs> I, the 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 whole laser thing. I absolutely love that you got that right. But in my personal opinion, I think. Jay won here because apart oh. from all the f bombs, you kind of had to read between the lines. He kind of pointed out a lot of the capabilities that Mario does have. Yoshi with his tongue, Luigi at his side all the time. We're not talking about the Super Mario Brothers movie because that is not canon. But 
In my opinion, so for me, round, I actually will say Ryan won, so Griffin's gonna have to be the one that's in the middle of this. I say he won because the laser part is totally true. Mario would fucking die. Sorry, uh, Griffin. Who do you say won? Um, <laughs> so it was starting out, and I was like, okay, so Jay is basically eviscerating Ryan right now. <laughs> um, but then Ryan came in, and then he said Mario always dies, and that is true. Um, well, Mario's comes back but also. I had to decipher what Jay was saying, like, through all of the profanity going on. And because I had to think about that, I got to give the point to Ryan. What? All right, so Ryan <laughs> is moving forward, and Jay is down. So, Jay, Fuck say... Me, Jay. So Jay, you got the runner up this time. <laughs> Jay, you did a good job, but I want to hear some last words from you, man. Um, I'm glad to be on this show. It's completely rigged, obviously, but I'm glad to be on here. <laughs> you lost you by one goddamn sudden death. <laughs> uh, <laughs> fuck your shit, Ryan. <laughs> but yeah, I was glad to be on here. Uh, I thought, like, I'm actually kind of glad I didn't do the video game portion because I gave it took me two minutes. <laughs> Probably would have lost that round, so you know what? I'm glad I made it this far, and if every round was like round one, I'd fucking annihilate every one of these players. So yeah. <laughs> Well, thank you, Jay, so much for bringing it along. But now we're going into round three, which is 8-Bit It. And I'm sure you guys are excited for this. So 8-Bit It is pretty much, it's about video games. It, you, we, What we did is we gave a character to each and every one of our competitors. And they all had to become around an original, compelling, creative video game that who knows. And it could be a character from any TV show, anime, video game, already, movie. But this is where we're going to. And also, guys, just so you guys know, Jay Vaders will be one of our guests judges for this one so he'll be judging with us to see who gets the most points this round so let's get started durbin it is your time to succeed and tell us your video game idea all right on your my marks, time. get set go okay so basically i chose the number seven which gave me luke skywalker and to build a video game around luke skywalker so i thought what unique thing can you do with luke skywalker let's make it take place right after the last Je last jedi when luke is dead and he's a force ghost so have it take place in the force ghost realm and this game is called force ghost and it's a massive open world where you can either choose to become the dark side and help kylo from the from the force or you could choose to be the light side and help ray you help ray by doing missions that are light side type missions you meet little force ghost farmers and you do good things for them you fill fulfill missions you you battle Darth Maul and, and the Emperor and others that are holding great territory and you take back their territory and it gives Rey more and more power. Or you could go the other way and defeat Yoda and defeat Obi-Wan and start defeating the light side of the force and give Kylo more power. So the choice is yours. Massive open world and you can explore it. You can just beat up random people, do whatever you want, but just know the game records your every decision to know whether you are the dark side or the light side. The end. Awesome. That's great. That's great. I loved it. All right, going here. Uh, we're going to start with Ryan this time. Ready, Ryan? On your marks, get uh, set, I... go. All right, my character is Danny Phantom from the Nickelodeon series, and my game is called Danny Phantom the Next... My game is Danny Phantom the New Generation, and it works like this. Danny Fa Phantom goes in different worlds and different stuff. We have his new friends in the game, like... Um, Excuse me, Sam Manson, Tucker Foley, Jazz Fenton. You can play as either character. It doesn't have to be just Danny Phantom. You can play as either one. And you can get to go in different worlds, like outer space, in the jungle, in the water. You can just play in these different battles and all that. And how the game works is you can play in different type of matches. There's a racing portion where you can race fully on different tracks and try to beat the opponent right next to you. And each character having different abilities you can win a racing part and you can earn a trophy. The next part I have is a ghost vanishing game. All of you guys can face off in this match, facing off and trying to vanish each ghost that you see and the winner gets points and gold and stuff and all that. And I also want to add in a Fortnite future where it's kind of like Battle Line 4. A Fortnite, I don't know the like, full title, sorry, Fortnite Battle Royale, where you could go into the Fortnite world and play as many people and play against people from all around the world and work together as teams and fight in different <clears throat> villains. And now there is a fully length version where you have to travel all around the world with your companions, uh, Sam Manson, Tucker Foley, and Jazz Fenton, and your final mission is to defeat the villain Vlad Plasmius. And the whole game, you go through different 
You go through different struggles and you also go through fun activities. So, Danny Phantom, The Next Generation. Cost $19.99. <laughs> Damn, he gave a price. Affordable. Great. All right, and Griffin, it's your cheap. turn. Let's go, Griffin. Give me one second. Let me stretch. Okay. And so, go. third person RPGs are pretty popular right now, especially with God of War coming out. So, my concept is essentially to try and create a cinematic third person RPG. So, my character, I chose number eight, and for whatever reason, the character was Eleven. That's just kind of weird. So, the, be the game essentially begins with Eleven returning to, I'm going to say Chicago for all intents and purposes, when she was in season two and she went to whatever the fuck that city was. I don't know what it was, but I'm going to say it's Chicago. So, because they're in Indiana. So, she returns to Chicago where she wants to join forces with that group of rogues from season two of Stranger Things, and that happened over ten years ago. So the upside down hasn't been open since then, and an anti-enhanced laws have been put in place to prevent further exploitation of children and supernatural like individuals running amok. So since Eleven hasn't ha has had to hide her abilities from the world in order to protect herself, um, it's put her in a weird situation. Situation, but she's able to have made a life with Mike. So my game takes place in the mid '90s, and as she enters Chicago essentially visions of her past slowly creep into her memory as she returns there. So she reunites with that girl from the rogue group that she kind of had a connection with and they rekindle an old f friendship. And then, you know, after a childhood of torture and terror, she's trying to start anew and whatnot. So she um, tries and has a normal life as a courier delivering packages to people. Um, and then she can also like have a place with Michael. So one day she receives a package to deliver and she that was specifically like requested that she delivers that package. So at the scene she gets a call telling her to open it. A large electronic looking explosion erupts and kills a large amount of people and certain people named uh, conduits. They, it gives them superpowers. So um, Eleven being the gifted individual she is managed to shield herself from the blast but the city around her has erupted into chaos. Gangs rise to power to avoid dealing with the problem. Uh, the city is quarantined and the government says the terrorists launched biochemical weapons into the city but there's something even more sinister going on the blast has caused the upside down to become unstable demogorgons and even more demons from the other side begin to emerge in pockets around the city so eleven is given a choice she can either use her powers for good and save the city from self-destruction closing the upside down for good preventing the demons from within from like running amok or she can resort back to her crime days where the people who threatened her and made her into the enhanced individual she is can pay and she along with her old gang of rogues can watch the city burn and after all like what is the world done for her so good powers are more precise and powerful while the evil 11 powers are more destructive so the difference between the two is that it's not only the fate of the city that's in like at stake here but uh it's how the ones close to you will receive you so you can cut ties with relationships and ruin stuff so it, it'll make for a really interesting character character study and the title of my game is called Eleven in all caps, and the V is a seven. Damn. Wow. Wow. All right, great. So, <laughs> I, I'm sure you do, Jay. So, with that going on, we're going to let you guys debate. Um, instead of five minutes this time, I'm only going to give you guys four. So, four Boom. minutes. That's all you guys got. And go. I don't know anything about okay, Nickelodeon, so, uh, so I feel kind of unequipped to talk about Ryan's game. It did sound kind of cool, but I like the Force Ghost one a lot better because it's Luke Skywalker, and everybody knows Luke Skywalker, and we've never seen the Force Ghost landscape, and it would be a lot of fun to play in that landscape and make decisions that affect the real world, so that'd be a lot of fun. So, so here's the thing about your... I, I want, I'll get to Ryan's in a second, but here's the thing about yours, Durbin. You have a really interesting character like Luke Skywalker, and you can choose like any point in time for which he's been alive, and you choose the afterlife? <laughs> because we've not that's seen necessarily that in Star like, Wars. There's so much you right, can explore, like, and that has it's been just, unexplored. If you look at it... Right, but if you look at it, it's just like the real world, but with ghosts. So, like, I, I mean, and I, I like the thing. Maybe. I like the thing where you were talking but about like him doing Kylo or or, or um or Ray. But like at the same time, I I just don't. I, I feel like I wouldn't get a lot of enjoyment out of that because it's just essentially you know it, like a point in Maybe, time in Luke Skywalker's like, life where yours, it just cool doesn't need to be told there, but it's based off the worst episode of season two of Stranger Things it's like the one I could have cared the some least. would say it's the best it's the worst. some would say well, it's they, the best they, they no some people attention. really like it because they of the character paid. development anyway point is is I I don't actually I kind of like your game Griffin but point is is I I, I would pick <laughs> my game 
because it allows you to go into something that's unexplored in Star Wars, something that you've not seen in Star. We haven't seen the Force realm. So it's a dirt. It I, I feel boring, like though. it is not boring. It's Breath of the Wild. Okay, let's talk Force about Ghost Luke Skywalker. Come on. So Durbin, let me, let me fix Skywalker your game for you. I'm gonna fix your game for you, Durbin. Who I'm, wants I'm to see a game, play a game with I, Luke, Luke Skywalker was forced upon me, and I did what, what I could. Ghosts do? They just come out of nowhere. <laughs> nice play on words. Like Yoda um, in the last. Durbin, I'm gonna fix. Durbin, I'm gonna fix your game. The way you make this interesting is you put it in between episodes six and seven when Luke Skywalker is trying to reestablish the Jedi Order and he's going around and he's collecting enhanced I mean, force that capable could individuals. Be interesting. That's interesting. That could be interesting. And I'm not gonna say that wouldn't be uninteresting, but I think it's more interesting to go into a realm unexplored and untouched by Star Wars. Okay, I'll, well, I, let me move on to Ryan's game. Ryan, yours sounds like a DLC made for, like, Nickelodeon.com games. I, I don't, like, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. Like, it's fine, but, like, there's there's nothing that's really enticing me to play it, especially as a 22-year-old person. I feel like that's more geared towards, like, five-year-olds, and if you look at, like, games geared towards younger kids like that, I don't think they perform as well. Um, I have no facts to back that up. That's just kind of, like, my own theory but uh it just there's a lot going on i'm not really sure where the main story is if there is one i like the conclusion where you're fighting like the bad guy because that's fun and it's danny phantom but it just seems like a bunch of arcade games mishmashed into this like nickelodeon.com game well let me just say both of your games sound just kind of boring for a video game video <laughs> games are meant to be fun and what? What's my game is nostalgia? exciting. What? What is boring about my decision game has making Obi -Wan and having to and stop Yoda. a city from getting destroyed? I got to play a game that has and fun the adventures. Emperor. It's my game is incredible. And my game does have a story. What is your story? My game is all about these different characters going to different worlds than not the basic world that they're in. Well, that's my game, so you ripped that off. Well, but okay, but that, that's that's like a person that's thirty years ago. Go from there. No one wants to play with Everybody wants to see no the realm of Force Ghosts. Everybody wants seconds. to know what happens to a Jedi when they die, and how did Yoda affect we the tree in the physical realm? Wars we want to know that game. stuff. You know, Let's go we have the more. Battle Here's the thing, Dur Durbin. You, you, you know, you know what happened with Solo. God. Durbin, you know what happened with Solo, hey. where we want, where we learned about movie, stuff we didn't need to know about? My game is original. We don't need to know about the Force Ghosts. This is a game. You get to interact. And add in new Done. stuff. <laughs> Who wants to play Fortnite? <laughs> no one wants to play Fortnite. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. All right, guys, just so everyone knows, we are still friends on this podcast. Oh, yeah. Or not yeah. podcast. We're friends oh, on yeah. this video. We're still all friends. A lot of us might be sweaty more than others. Some of us might have to shower after this. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right, so what we're going to do now is give a 30-second rebuttal to each person. Griffin, you shall go. 30 seconds. Okay. So my game is really interesting because it deals with one of the more interesting episodes of the series. Some people don't like it, but it's diving into Eleven's past, and it's all about decision making, much like Mass Effect, Infamous, games like that. And it's exploring the Stranger Things lore later down the road, like 10 years later. Ryan's game is an arcade made for kids, and Durbin is exploring something we don't need to know about. It's the solo effect. Damn. Okay. 20 seconds there. All right, Ryan, I'm going to let you go. On go. Well, I've not seen Stranger Things, but why do we need to know a backstory of a main character? I can just you can just watch the show, backstory. right? And and same as uh, Durbin, I just don't feel compelled or entertained to play his game. I don't want to see Luke basically as a Force ghost. We could see that in a movie. That works more as a movie than a video game. My video game is different. You could go to different worlds and not the same world and go on a big adventure, have racing, and have different fun adventures than just the basic story. Awesome. And Durbin, your turn. My game is not the solo effect, and it is not boring, and it is something that you would be interested in because it's exploring a different area of Star Wars that has not been explored yet, and we get to use our imaginations there. And just because they're Force Ghosts doesn't mean they're floating wispy clouds. They're awesome characters. Think Breath of the Wild, but Star Wars, and it's awesome. And great job. All right, everyone. That was very ferocious. And Cody, are you ready? Do you have your scores and everything calculated and what your ideas are? I believe so. so. Yeah, so Jay, <laughs> you do as well. So Jay, you're going to give them 1 through 15 as well. So I'm going to start. I'm going to talk about, um, we're going to go, I'm going to go with Durbin's first. So Durbin, your idea, Force Ghost. I, I'm intrigued with it. It's cool. 
I like that it's going to go to this world. Kind of seems like a Shadow of Mordor type of stuff with, like, Luke Skywalker in this world. And I also like that you mentioned Breath of the Wild at the end, because I love that fucking game. But the <laughs> one thing I had the adamance about is, for me, it's like... It could have the Batman Arkham Knight effect of having kind of boring boss battles because I look at your bosses and I'm like, well, cool, you kill them, but where do they go after that? Don't they just come back as another Force Ghost again? No, they go into Oblivion. It's Who oblivion. knows? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But with that said, I'm going to give your score of 13. Jay? I'll take it. Yeah, Jay, what about you? What do you think of his? Okay, cool. So what's your score? For one thing, I chose Darth. I had Darth Vader, so my pitch would have been very interesting. A lot of killing younglings in my my pitch, but <laughs> uh, okay. Um, am I talking about all of them or just one? Just uh, you're just talking about Durbin's right now. You're gonna give just her a score, just your overall thoughts. Quick thoughts. To be honest, right when this pitch started off, I thought Durbin had it because I thought his was the most creative and original. And I've never seen that before. Like, I've never seen where do the Force Ghosts go. And, like, he has to fight all these bad guys and stuff. Like, that would not work as a movie or a comic book. But as a video game, that could very much work. And it could be fun. It feels very, uh, could be, like, Force Unleashed or Knights of the Old Republic and stuff. Um, however, Griffin took him down a lot. And I gotta say about rebuttals, and Griffin kind of wrecked, like damaged his rebuttal at times. And even oh, Griffin did nothing. Yeah, and Durbin, <laughs> all, for a second, Durbin almost gave up when he said, "Oh, I like Griffin's pitch." I'm like, no, Durbin, you're winning and you're giving up. <laughs> but uh, I, I still liked his idea. It's a flawed idea, and even Griffin said it would be interesting if it was between six and seven. That's the true story. But for gameplay, it's very entertaining. Like, sometimes I don't even give a fuck about uh, the story for a video game. I care about how fun it is. And that does sound badass and pretty fun. So I'm going to give Durbin 12. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. And what about you, Cody? Short thoughts right there. What's your score and what are your overall thoughts? Well, it looks like we're all pretty much on the same page because I really, really enjoyed Durbin's idea. There were some issues. Yes, I thought Griffin took it down a little bit, and I thought that Durbin kind of went to the dark side when he said Griffin's idea was a pretty cool idea. But the, one thing that, <laughs> the one thing that I can't get a hold of is the fact that there have been cool Star Wars games before, like Knights of the Old Republic. Zach mentioned Shadow of Mortar. Honestly, Durbin's idea sounds like it could be uh, Shadows of Mortar meets Knights of the Old Republic meets Breath of the Wild. I mean, who said we even saw in The Last Jedi that Force users, they can use physical objects such as lightning. So this could be a really, really cool idea. And I, it's just, I, I'm not exactly sure where the game would go. Not exactly a flaw, but I'll give Durbin 13. Awesome. So that brings Durbin to 65 points. Yeah, yeah. So, now we're going to talk about Ryan's idea. So, Ryan, you have Danny Phantom, one of my favorite cartoon characters, and I the fact that you don't know him just makes me want to give you a zero. But, you came up with a concept that, overall, yes, dirt, or, yes, overall, Griffin did say it is for kids, but as I look at that, I remember one of my favorite games growing up was a Nickelodeon game when you see all the Nickelodeon characters together, and that kind of brought back fond memories because I'm kind of getting into old nostalgic games and kind of buying them for no fucking reason because I'm never going to play them probably. But... I really did like that you said going to different worlds and stuff. The racing portion, the Battle Royale stuff, was not really original to me, and I thought you could have just gotten rid of that. I think just going on an adventure with these characters and going to beat Vlad Plasmus, I don't remember his name really, but I remember kicking his ass would have been nice, and that's something that I think I would have liked to see more of the story just emphasis on and the gameplay in that. So with all that said, I'm going to give a 10 to you, Ryan. Uh, Jay, what about you? What, what do you think about Ryan's idea? Ryan, um... It sounds like almost every Crash Bandicoot video game ever made, his game, which I have no problem with. I love Crash Bandicoot, but uh, his sounded fun, though. Like, uh, the story uh, sounds like, again, Crash Bandicoot or Sonic or anything, so very unoriginal. But uh, I know Danny Phantom. I, I like Danny Phantom, Fan Phantom, and uh, I would never play his game for story elements, or but it does sound goofy and fun, and I again, I play video games to have fun. So it sounds like a very fun idea. 
very unoriginal though, and it's nothing that I go run out. But hey, twenty dollars though, you kind of sold me on that. Video games are fucking expensive. I and know, you right? Twenty nineteen ninety. <laughs> that was genius, Ryan, for saying it's nineteen ninety nine. You know what? Well, you know what? I can spend twenty bucks. Like, gee, that's cheaper than the new release Blu Ray. So for that, I'll give you eleven points for the for the nineteen ninety nine. Awesome. awesome. <laughs> and Cody, what about you? Okay, there was some elements that I really liked about the game. The whole, the story aspects that you had, like them journeying with Danny Phantom and Tucker and Sam going up against Vlad Plasmus. That sounds like a really, really cool Danny Phantom game. And the certain aspects that you had in it, like the different world hopping, I think that could be cool because world hopping is something that video games have done that can be fun, notably the Kingdom Hearts series. That could be fun. My only problem here is the mixing and matching of different kind of gameplay. Racing, uh, racing, Fortnite. I mean, are, are there going to be guns in the Fortnite portion? Because if there is, I think that kind of counteracts what we're going for with the racing portion and also the regular story with Danny Phantom and his friends. That's one of my bigger issues. It kind of reminds me of the Die Hard series for, I think it was for the N64, where it was just three different kinds of games in one game that you feel should have been different. I feel if Ryan, had, if you had focused more on the story element and made a more streamlined experience, I think it would have been better. Yeah. But I still think the game can be a ton of fun. So I'll give you a nine. I think the levels are fine. All right. So that brings Ryan to 54 points. Now, we are talking about That's Griffin's fine. idea now. And you. so Griffin's idea, I, I really enjoyed Eleven. Um, Eleven's one of the most unique characters in Stranger Things. And yes, given Durbin said, yes, that was like the worst episode of season two. It only was the worst because it was in the worst spot, but it was still a good episode. What his game reminded me of, though, was the games of Infamous. And that's something I like, but the one thing I've always wanted in Infamous is more of a choice and stuff like that. And that's where Griffin really got me, is where he talked about choice and having your choice in this world and the gangs and the conduits and everything like that. Yes, it borrowed a little bit from Infamous, but it did add more elements that from that game that I really liked. So I'm going to give Griffin, um, what did I give him? I gave him 13. Yep, okay, your Griffin, turn, um... His had flat out probably like the best story. Uh, every everything he was saying, I'm like, okay, okay, I'm interested, I'm interested, I'm interested. It was captivating. It was even profound at times. Uh, the only thing I had a problem with, but thank God he 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 redeemed himself at the ending. But I'm like, he didn't explain a lot of the gameplay. See, at least I had a I had a vision. I was like a vision looking at these games while they were explaining it. I'm like, okay. But then with Griffin's, he was just telling a story. I'm like, okay, I'm trying to picture the gameplay. But then at the end, he said it's like Infamous slash Mass Effect. I went, okay, now I can actually see the gameplay. Because that was my only problem with Griffins, because it had a great story, but I couldn't see the gameplay. I could see Ryan's, I could see Durbin's, but I couldn't see Griffins. But when he at the ending, when he said it's a lot like Infamous, I'm like, okay, it's like gameplay like Infamous, but it's 11 in her story. Like, okay, I'm on board. I'll give him 14 points. Nice. All right, and Cody. <laughs> You know what? I'll tell you. I'll tell you what I love about about this game. It's, in my opinion, it's a near perfect game to me that I would love to play. There's just a couple of things I had wrong with it, and it's exactly what Jay said. It's the very beginning till the utter and complete chaos of the city. I thought the build up to it. I thought it was a little bit slow, and I'm wondering if that would be slow inside of the gameplay itself. So that was a knockoff for me. But with the choices and the gameplay that you described, when it comes to the chaos in the city, this feels like it could be like any any uh, game that allows you to give you like a Mass Effect. It could be Mass Effect, and with the action sequences and, and the gameplay you described in the city. It could be Mass Effect meets Infamous meets Batman Arkham City, which is the best of the Arkham games. But, I mean, it, this game, it sounds incredible overall, and Eleven, in my opinion, is the best character that we got within Stranger Things. And what you've done with her as a character and her arc in the game, I would be very interested. I'd pay a full $60 to play this game. I, 14 points for me. So that Ooh. makes uh, Griffin with 74 points, and sadly, Ryan has been eliminated so wow. Ryan, Don't you Ryan, guys want to be nostalgic? So Ryan, so Ryan, do give your final thoughts and do stick around because Ryan will be our next judge for round four going in. And Jay, you can stick around as being an audience member. Aww. <laughs> so kind. So kind. 
Well, the fact that you guys want to pay 120 right, Ryan, bucks for a game is ridiculous words. to me. But still, thank you so much, Zach and Cody, for having me on Entertainment Wars. I try my best. Even though I haven't <laughs> seen Danny Phantom in a long time, I've never seen it as a kid, but I've just forgotten completely about it. But yeah, I'm excited to find out who wins this. And I'm intrigued. Let's get it on. Awesome. So now we're going into round four, which the competitors know nothing about. But me and I Cody do. Anything. So round four, Ryan will be joining us as a judge, and Jay will just be one of our audience members. So with this going into round four, we're going to have a two-minute intermission because we're, what we're going to do, the round four is called Film It. And the last two players, the points don't matter at this point. It's just whoever wins this. They're going to debate. They're going to have two. They're going to have a minute and a half to discuss their film and pitch their film to us, just like a real, like film producer would probably give them then they're gonna have two minutes to, to argue and debate and then 30 seconds again t for the rebuttal the thing with this though is they have to make their own film but we're gonna give them uh, numbers between one and four and we're gonna let them choose they're gonna get a random selection of an actor actress and a director and they have to make a film around that so again we're gonna give them two minutes to think that and since griffin has the most points though we're gonna let griffin kind of choose one through four so griffin choose one, one through, through four. four uh let's go with four all right, so, and, Durbin, what is your number? I'll go with one. Oh, oh God. I'm so sorry. Oh, so, God. so, like I said, we are going into intermission, two-minute intermission, because I'm going to give him the actor and actress or and director. So, Griffin, number you selected number four. Your actor is Shia LaBeouf. Okay. And your director is Stanley Kubrick. Oh, easy. And, Durbin, I am so sorry. You selected the one that I kind of wanted someone to select, but I'm glad you did. You selected oh number one as Mariah Mills. You might not know who this actress is. She's a porn star. And <laughs> oh my god, but, you're awful. <laughs> but your director is Martin Scorsese. Again, think about this, though. Your actor actress doesn't have to be the main character. It can be a side character. So, we're going to go. Tune in. And we're going to intermission. Alright guys, and welcome back to Entertainment Wars. That was a great intermission, and we gave our two competitors, two great warriors, some time to think, what film should they make? Because we just kind of sprung this on them, and that's the best thing. We want them to be on the edge of their toes, and you guys on the edge of your toes. So, let's get to it. Durbin, I'm going to let you go first, since I screwed you over with the actress. So, <laughs> on your mark, get set. You got a minute and a half to discuss your thoughts and your pitch, and go. My Mariah Mills Scorsese <laughs> film is this. We open on Gotham City. Oh my God. And we see a man in a red hood running for his life, running from the cops. A figure in a bat cape swoops down from the sky, hits this figure. He flies over the rails into a vat of chemicals. This is the birth of the Joker. Mariah Mills plays attorney Harvey Dent. Oh my yeah, God. A female version of Harvey Dent. And she comes to the aid to defend Jack Napier, the man now bleached white as the Joker. This is before his madness begins to set in. And what this film is about, it is about him being in jail, trying to get out because his wife was murdered by these thugs. And that's why he did this job to begin with. His wife was pregnant. He just wanted to raise the money to have a family. And he did this with this gang and Batman screwed him over. And now he just wants to get out. He wants his vengeance because this mobster people, they killed his wife. So he needs to get out of there. He needs to break free. And while Harvey Dent understands this and understands, she can't just, but point is, as he continues to get more and more evil, his mind more and more poisoned by this. We watch him turn more and more to the Joker that we know, and that mind begins to poison the mind of Harvey Dent until finally he escapes, and Harvey Dent is the one who chases him down, and he throws her into a vat of chemicals, searing half of her face. And so she Five comes seconds. out now as the great Harvey Dent Two Face, split personality, Done. and as Batman goes. Awesome. That that was very intriguing, and the fact that you made a porn star <laughs> into that is even better. Uh, all right, and Griffin, on your marks, get set, go. So this is a little bit unfair because I've actually had this idea for a film I've wanted to make for a while, so I'm going to kind of adapt it oh, for this. But um, the name of my film is called The Projectionist, and the movie follows a projectionist in the 1960s played by Shia LaBeouf. He's a really socially awkward individual, kind of creepy, and there's this woman that starts to enter the theater. She starts to go in. She goes to a lot of movies. 
Um, and so he's the working the projectionist and he's kind of like creeping on her. He's a really weird individual. And so he starts like stalking her a little bit. And then, you know, he finally gets the nerve to actually go up and talk to her. And so they have an encounter. Um, she's a little weirded out, but she's also intrigued. And so she goes away and then eventually, um, you know, she comes back to the theater. They have a conversation um some more and, and so it's about them kind of getting to know each other but the guy you're still not unsure about you don't know if he's gonna like kill her or anything um so he um what else happens he like so something happens where the girl comes rushing into the theater and so the guy is getting ready to come down from the projection booth uh, he's kind of weirdly enough made like a shrine to her in the projection area it's like super creepy so which is great for Stanley Kubrick because he does really great psychological thrillers and unsettling stuff 15 seconds left um, and so what happens is the girl is actually involved in uh, a mob boss and so the tables are flipped and so it's it, it becomes like um, and, and she was just like involved um, with the murder or something like that in the the mobs um all right done yeah all right well it's trying to balance the yeah never mind all right i don't have so, it written out it's just an idea you, i've had in my head but now you guys gotta debate this all right so i'm gonna let you guys debate um, and on your marks get set go um Dirk. griffin your idea is pretty good but i got scorsese so it doesn't matter that they gave me a porn star to cast in there i got freaking scorsese and he's already putting together an excellent joker movie. do you know that for a fact out. do you know that for a fact that he is actually, well, actually putting together we never a know phenomenal what joker he's movie. going to do but the point is that's not what this argument is about <laughs> this argument is about the origin of the joker in your and his gangster life and the origin of harvey dent but from a different angle like batman earth one volume two which is a very interesting take and i'm bringing those comic books to the big screen with Scorsese, yeah. But it's just Batman. Like, there's no. You, this is all about it's originality. This is like you an original concept. That. You're just That's taking like a story it's from Batman, Batman and adapting it yeah. for that. Like, I'll give you. Yeah. I did not explain my film the best, but at least it's like an original psychological thriller with this guy who's stalking this girl. But then the girl is also equally as bad in a different realm. So it becomes a moral dilemma of trying to side between the two characters, and that makes for some of the more interesting stories. Is when you have two very distinct characters that are not really protagonists but and you try and side with one of the two that's one of the reasons why I like Sicario 2 so much is that all of the characters in that film right. are not so black and white and so having to like decide which one is but right while in while that's so interesting this is about the fall and the Joker's psyche and following him down <laughs> into the darkness and taking an a, attorney with him down that rabbit hole and it's not even really about Batman it's kind of like Suicide left. Squad where Batman's so, in the background somewhere this is about their mobster mentality and their fall into darkness. Let, let me fix your idea again. This would work better if it was a if, if it was strictly a crime film where there was no, it is a crime but, but no film. you take out all of the Batman stuff it, it just becomes a, a, a crime film where this traumatic no, that, ha accident that's the happens salt that makes it better it's the salt on the meal that makes it taste better yeah but it's it's You're, it's, it's still just seconds, Batman five, you know what I'm saying four, like it does it's not three. gonna like it's not just Batman two, that's like cursing one, done. you can't say that done, done. all right 30 second rebuttals now. Durbin, 30 seconds. Go. Mine is an interesting drama digging not into just the origins of the Joker, but showing how does somebody fall from somebody really trying to provide for their family deep down into this mentality. It's not comic booky, it's not super powery, it's about his fall, and it's about how this attorney with the best of intentions will fall into darkness because that darkness is contagious. So it's about how do you guard your soul, and neither of these two characters did such a thing. All right, awesome. Griffin, you go. Now. Um, so mine's really interesting because it plays into Stanley Kubrick's strengths, and you also have an actor like Shia LaBeouf, who we've seen from Disturbia, plays really great character actors in really unsettling situations. Plus, the guy's gone off the rails, so playing a, a psychopath like this would be really interesting. Plus, you've got two not necessarily protagonists that you're trying to decide which one do you side with more, and their decisions throughout the film make for a really interesting psychological thriller that is just right up Stanley Kubrick's alley. And Durbin's is just Batman. That's, Bam. It's not no, 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 no. So, let me say this. I really liked both your concepts. The fact that we just gave you... I know Griffin kind of had these thoughts, but the fact that, like, you didn't have it written down or anything is great. Durbin, you put, like, a cool Batman theme in there. I didn't expect that with a porn star, to be honest. I Like, literally... <laughs> and the thing about this way is that maybe she has been in a Batman movie before that probably none of us have seen, but it's probably on the internet. <laughs> this is my thing I will say, though. 
I really liked both your ideas. And I'm going to start with Durbin's first before I get to who I think was better. I love Durbin's idea. I love the decision. But the thing that Griffin did say was you could easily take out Batman. I think it would have been more interesting. But yes, it's cool. It's in the Batman world. Yes, you put a porn star in the Batman movies. Who knows? That's probably happened before. I don't know. <laughs> but it was a unique idea. And the fact that you changed Harvey Dent into an African-American woman is something special. <laughs> Griffin, I love your idea because I love that something perfect that Kubrick would be able to pull off. Something awesome that Shia LaBeouf would be able to pull off. And it kind of just gives me that weird horror route, kind of like an esque of Psycho, but it's not Psycho. Kind of like you feel like a romance in there, weirdly, yeah. but it's not. And I really just, I dug that idea, so... I'm gonna have to give it to Griffin because I that's the film I wanna see. But don't get me wrong, Durbin, I kinda wanna see yours too, just see how it pans out. But I, I have to give it to Griffin because I'm really interested in that film. Uh Cody, what is yours before we get to Ryan? Okay, so with this, I'm gonna start out with Durbin as well. The the fact of the matter is what I love so much that he did is taking this whole is it's not exactly a Joker versus Batman movie. The fact that Batman's in there at the very beginning, but Honestly, it's a very deep and personal tale about somebody who, for the majority of this runtime, is locked up. And it's about Harvey, Harvey Dent trying to get him out of there. And it's about him trying to figure out where his, his wife is. He's not necessarily worried about So it's just a deep, personal story about the guy, the man who would become the Joker. And I really like that deep, personal take. It feels like it would be... It feels like it would be a more, more down-to-earth, gritty, more realistic take on the Joker. But then again, uh, honestly, the thing I love about Griffin's idea and the reason why I think Griffin should should win this is, number one, it's something he said. It's the fact that Griffin's idea is very, very original. Granted, he's had this idea on his mind for a while now. I'll give that to Durbin. He has. However, the idea is original, it's creepy, it's suspenseful. I mean, the way he described the characters makes me want to watch this to see how they're going to progress. It feels like it could be a mix of, say, The Godfather meets The Shining meets, you know, a hundred other one of Stanley Kubrick's movies. It could have also, the, the it, it could have, um, it, it could have some some orange in there as well i mean this idea is something that i love and i i honestly even if even if stanley kubrick is dead i hope somebody is listening because or i i just want this idea to be made personally so for me it's also a win for griffin all right well with that said obviously griffin has won this but we do want to get ryan's take so ryan really fast we both selected griffin but we want to hear your takes on durbin and griffins who would you have selected and what were your thoughts all right, starting with Durbin. Durbin, I was interested in your idea for a lot of it. I'm going to give you a point for originality for Harvey Dent, not Harvey Dent. It's a cool <laughs> game. I'm interested in a cool, different Batman game and the Joker and all that. But I think, Durbin, where you lost me in your argument is uh, Harvey Dent turning into Two-Face. It's I think it's done better in The Dark Knight. I would have liked to see a little bit more of an original idea from your end, Durbin. But the character Harvey Dent sounds cool, and I gave you a point for originality, so I gave you 10 points, Durbin. But my clear winner was Griffin. Griffin had the most original idea. Um, I was really into this projectionist storyline, and Shia LaBeouf, I think, would be a perfect part for that. And I like how you brought up the, um, the relationship, and it's kind of like a thriller. Like you said, Stanley Kubrick does thrillers. And I think this is an original story. I don't think we've seen a projectionist type of storyline before. It sounds creative, and I like how you brought up a twist that the girls were working with the crime boss. I think that would work as a great plot twist, and Stanley Kubrick is known for that. So my clear winner is Griffin. Griffin, I gave you 14 points. Woo! Sweet. So, guys, that is it. That is Entertainment Wars. Griffin, you won. Durbin, you did a great job. You had some creative stuff in there. All of them had creative stuff in there. Before we get going, I want everyone to say their final thoughts one more time. Tell them where they can find you at. And, yeah, that's it. So, uh, we'll start with you, Durbin, since you are the second place winner for this first episode, this first battle. Durbin, give, tell them where they can find you at. Tell us uh, what, what were your main thoughts of this. Did you like it? Did you not? What did you think? Well, 
I think this was awesome. This is like probably one of the funnest shows I've done. I had a blast with this thing. All the stuff where we got to be creative and pitch ideas. That was just that was just awesome. And I'm proud that if I'm gonna come in second place and lose, that it's to Griffin's <laughs> awesome idea. Cause I would watch that movie. You're not allowed to say that when you're debating, but I would watch that movie. That was a good one. I would also watch my Joker one for the record, cause that, that was <laughs> up with on the fly. I think we all would. But yeah. Anyway, so I mean, I I'm, I'm glad that you know I could come in second to such honorable and awesome ideas and so thank you guys for having me i'm durbin if you want to check me out just search durbania on youtube i am the only one that'll pop up come check out my channel awesome and griffin where can they find you at and yeah give us your final thoughts yeah thanks zach and cody for having me on this was an absolute blast i'm honored to be the victor of the very first entertainment wars i'm gonna echo what durbin said this is probably one of the most fun like game shows I've been a part of on YouTube and uh, just awesome to collaborate with a bunch of guys and duke it out in some debates. Um, appreciate the <laughs> the support from Dermot. Thank you for like liking the idea. I, I actually think yours would have been pretty good as well, even though I just said it's Batman, but you know, I, who doesn't like Batman? But um, <laughs> um, yeah, but yeah, right. Screw that bat guy, fucking idiot. Um, <laughs> yeah, right. Um, but yeah, if you guys like me and you want to support the Men vs. Movies YouTube channel, head on over to Men vs. Movies. We do movie reviews, um, a bunch of podcasts. We've got a Westworld podcast that by the time this show airs, the season two will be over. But if you were not caught up, you can get caught up and listen to the uh, the, the episodes as you go along. Um, you can like Men vs. Movies on Facebook and Twitter simply by searching Men vs. Movies. And if you like me specifically and you like what I have to say, you can always give me a follow on Twitter at at Griff Schiller. I think that's about it. This was a blast. I'm honored to win. Hey, we're honored to have you. And also, let's give a shout out to Ryan and Jay. Ryan, where can they find you at? Well, once again, thank you so much, Zach and Cody, for inviting me on the first episode of Entertainment Wars. This was a total blast. And Jay, Griffin, and Durbin, you guys are awesome as well. You guys had great original pitches. But yeah, if you guys want to find me, I'm Ryan O2 on YouTube. I do movie reviews. Movie reviews, ranking videos, Rotten or Fresh, my game show over there. All of these guys have been on my game show, so go check it out. And, yeah, this was a total blast. You can find me on Twitter, Rhino2MR, Stardust, Ryan Movie Review, Facebook, Rhino2Movies. And, yeah, if you like me, come follow me. <laughs> yes, his game show, Rotten or Fresh, is a ton of fun. A lot of guessing, but tons of fun as well. I like that show. And, of course, Jay Vaders, the one fucking percent you lost by again today. I'm sorry, my friend. Where can they find you at? Oh, hey, I'm Jay Vaders on Jay Vaders on YouTube. Do top tens, rankings, movie reviews, and all that shit. We all do that shit. So, yeah, check me out if you want to hear me talk and just post a lot of videos. Again, no life, this guy. And, yeah, I probably would have came in first this episode, but I didn't try hard enough. So, for next time. <laughs> for next time, of course. For next time. <laughs> oh, my God. All right, and of course, my other host on here, Cody. This was a blast making this show, and I, I had a ton of fun. Can't wait to do the next one. No, absolutely, Zach. You know, guys, one thing you should know is we, we put a lot of hard work into getting this show together for you, and so we want to hear your thoughts about it. If there are some stuff that you guys think we can improve on this show, don't be afraid to let us know. We enjoy your criticism because it allows us to be better to improve and make this show better for everybody. This was a blast to put together, and of course, if you guys don't already know, besides this show, Zach and I also have a podcast that you can go listen to called The Sweet Film Podcast. So it's over on Zach's channel or it's on iTunes and SoundCloud. So do yourself a favor and go check that out. We have great guests on there. And we also talk about movie news and just everything that we love on the web. Yeah, guys, so make sure to go subscribe to everyone. Go check out the podcast. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode. Please give us your feedback down below. Tell us, would you guys have selected someone else's answers? That's what's the most important thing is maybe you guys would have selected Jay. Maybe Jay would have won. Maybe you guys wanted Jay to win. That's what's important here, guys. Of course, we will be looking at the comments to see how we can fix the next episode, and that's that's why. We we know the first episodes aren't, aren't always perfect. It's just how you start a YouTube channel. Stuff aren't perfect, but that's where we're going to look at it. We're going to change some things maybe, maybe keep some things, maybe do up some other things but of course this was the first episode so guys again thank you so much for joining us thank you to all my beautiful warriors who did join us and my other host on here as well so guys of course until next time you guys all stay classy and have fun
if you're seeing this, that means we're slowly taking over.